Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. We're up to part three of this week's episode of the show. We're diving even deeper into our conversation with this week's guest. Let's continue exploring their inspiring journey. If you've missed part one and two, definitely go back and catch up. Also, if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you soon. With that terms of connection, before we move on away from your childhood, mm-hmm. um, what was the connection like with your sister and and and, and I suppose the the, the dyan- dynamics with her and her mum? Did she see that as well alongside you? Did she live a similar life to you? Yeah. yeah. So there's there's eight years um, between me and my sister. So um, you know, when I was a teenager, she was a young girl. So we definitely had different experiences um you know there were certain things that i saw that she didn't see um and then vice versa because you know when i was a teenager i was going out gallivanting with my friends and you know she wasn't um you know and it's not to say that we were always just with my my mom we were we would stay at my grand's a lot as well um Mm. so you know when my my sister was really young she would be at my at my grand's and you know we're very we're very fortunate to have had my grand because you know who knows we could have been taken away you know you just you just don't don't know um but yeah me and my sister went through definitely different different experiences um and you know because i experienced it you know in that kind of pre-teens and teens where she was much younger um so yeah and and equally uh not great for for either of us but um yeah and then me and my sister were never that close growing up we've we've definitely gotten closer um in our adulthood and we now me and my sister talk um a lot more um you know respect how we're feeling present day but we we don't i must say we don't really um you know, go into the past too much and talk about it too much. We talk about it more present day and, and complain about certain things in the present day. But, um, yeah, we haven't explored it as as much um, in the past. It's probably something that we should do at some point. Yeah, maybe, maybe it'll be healthy. Maybe, it'll be healthy. maybe she needs it and she's just not bringing it up, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. Is she still in Scotland as well? She's in Aberdeen, so she studied in Aberdeen, and now she lives in Aberdeen. She's training to be an accountant. Oh, cool. Mm. And I take it your mum's still over there as well? Yes. Has, has either of them ever been over to Australia to see you? Yes. Uh, yeah, well, my sister came out when she was 18. Um, I convinced her to take a gap year because she really didn't want know what she wanted to do for uni. So I was like, I'll just put it off for a year and come out here. So she was out here for a year uh, then. Oh, cool. um, and then, yes, my mum has, um, my mum's come out. And, you know, she is good when she comes out. Like, I'm like, I'm always like, you can come out, but, you know, don't drink. So, she, you know, she comes out and she's never drank or anything when she's been out here because I'm very... Um, I'm just very conscious of not wanting my kids to be subjected to anything I was. So um yeah, and when she comes out, um yeah, she doesn't drink and we have a we have an okay time. <laughs> oh good. And you so you're in charge of the situation when she comes. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> so you said in um in your young childhood you were obsessed with reading, you fell into um their stories and their characters. I suppose that's an escapism, isn't it? Yeah. Did you, you, how did you do, did you take that into further, into further education? Yeah. Well, I must say before we move on, I was like, here, I just got to show you. So I wrote a story when I was 10. Um, I, there was a story writing competition, um, at school and I wrote a story about a gorilla. Uh, it was uh, a young boy in the, in New York city. I don't know why I was 10. I don't know why the, this was 10. The best well. city in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, he decided he was going to, he was 14 and he decided he was going to uh, break this gorilla out of, um, I think the gorilla was in jail um, and him and his friend Lucy um, stole the uncle's van and they drove the gorilla back to Africa to set it free. So I wrote this like big long story, many plot holes, uh, wrote this story, but I just loved it. I was, like escaped into it, writing it. And um, I, I still remember um, a boy in my class saying to me, you can't enter that. It's way too long because there was a certain amount of like word count and my was, was was way too long. I was like, I'm going to enter anyway. Anyway, I won out of not only the school, but all the schools in the county. And I was, I got a trophy and I was just so happy. And then my dad, my dad's like really proud. My dad uh, put it into like a little book and there it is, I still got it. Wow. <laughs> 
Yeah. Nice. Can you can you flick it through open and? Yeah, and he even so that my dad put in. So my dad put on the back like about the author and a picture of me and him. <laughs> oh, brilliant! That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, so I've good. I've got any printed loads of copies so that, um, for the family. And you should you it, should yeah. sell it. Sell it? Nobody would want to buy it. <laughs> well, that's what I. Yeah, right. You know how many authors have thought that. I can say it because I've not sold many. But <laughs> so did you? So you took that into? Did you take that passion in with you any further into education? Yeah, sorry, sorry, that was a bit of a. Um, no, it was uh, good. I'm glad you brought that. That is awesome. Um, yeah, so I'd I'd always thought I'd always loved to write. So I'd always wanted to be um, an author and a journalist because um, I just. I loved writing, I love stories, but I also just love people. I've always been, curiosity is another one of my values. I've always been very curious about um, people. My husband says I'm nosy, I prefer curious. Um, so <laughs> journal <laughs> journalism made sense to me. I got I could write and I could ask people questions. That's the two things I, I do even now in my business. Um, so yeah, I studied journalism. And that's what I did in uh, university. I studied that yeah, for four years. Just going back to that story, it just came to me. Was that was that story symbolism for something for your own life? Maybe I don't reflect oh, if you're I hadn't really thought of that. Oh, could have been. I don't maybe know. it's because I don't know where it came from. I don't know why I was like a gorilla in New York City. Yeah, sounds like you were just changing the characters and the places to make it not look like really what it was, but maybe it was reflective of what it was. Subconscious. I'm being Karim here. Oh wow, <laughs> deep. <laughs> He'd be proud of me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So you, <laughs> which university do you go to? Again, sorry. So it was uh, Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so how did uh, university go to you, go for you, and then where did it take you after after university? Yes, yeah. yeah, so it was it was good. I mean, I um as I said, I kind of given you an insight into my teenage years, and I've already said that I'm quite impulsive. The reason I picked that university because I think I got into three or four. It was just one Stirling University I didn't get into, but um, so I had to pick a four. And the reason I picked that one because was because a friend I knew who was in the year above me, he was at Robert Gordon University, and he said go to Robert Gordon and stay in Woolman Hill um, student halls because it's great for a party. And I kid you not, that's why I picked that university. And I guess that also comes down to not really having that parent helping you make a proper decision. Um, so that's that's how my university year started. So yeah, my, my first year of university was probably just enjoying the freedom. I, I, I started uni when I was 17. Um, so I was one of the youngest in my year. And I just loved the freedom, like being out of that house, um, living with, uh, there was eight of us in student halls. Um, and I probably, yeah, I probably partied more than I went to lectures, um, but I loved it. Um, but then, yeah, second and third year, I started, you know, calming down a, a little bit and, um, and studying. And I really enjoyed the course. Um, but yeah, I got, when I got into my th third year of university I think it was I did a module called investigative journalism and this the one of the teacher the teacher was a ex-reporter and she'd been a reporter for like 20 years and I I couldn't understand I was like why is she teaching like because she she'd done this job that I dreamed of doing I just couldn't fathom why she would why she was teaching so I asked her I said why are you teaching us um and she said that she'd um, there was one day um, a young girl um, had been murdered and her editor said you need to go to the parents house and get the story and she said it wasn't the first time it had happened but for whatever reason she was like I, I can't do this anymore um, and she quit um, but when she was telling and I still this is one of those vivid stories that I remember I still remember her telling me that story because that was a moment when I thought Oh, I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to do that. I knew I wouldn't be able to do it, um, mm. and I thought, oh, maybe this isn't for me. I still finished it, um, but I thought, oh, I, I don't think I'd enjoy doing that either. Um, no, me so, neither. Mm, yeah, yeah. But I'm I like, think sometimes you don't think about it when you choose a career path and you just you you're just studying it. You don't think of those little ins and outs, those intricacies, and and then once she told me that, I started thinking more about it and I started really looking into it. I was like. 
oh yeah, there's probably a lot about journalism that, I, that wouldn't align with me. Um, and that's when I realised this wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, I didn't even think about stuff like that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to avoid all those type of negative I don't even know what you'd have to report on. <laughs> well, and and the the ironic thing is now I I don't watch the news. I've not watched the news in years. People are like, "How? What do you mean you don't watch the news?" Because like, it just it's too. I get too involved. Like there was one time my husband came home from uh, work and I was actually shouting at the TV because I was getting that annoyed. And he's like, "Just don't watch it." Um, so I don't even watch the news anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because people can say that to me. Why don't you watch the news? Like, you need to stay informed. Why do I? Why do I actually need to stay informed? Yeah. Tell me why. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll go and read. I'll go and read all these my books. Yes. And learn. I don't need to hear about this negativity. Some, you know, you get that negative comeback, don't you? Oh, that's just, you know, it's ignorant. You're being ignorant to the world. All right. Well, the ignorant part of the world is a safer place in my yeah. own head. Yes. <laughs> well, my my answer is like, okay, then I'm ignorant. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, guessing... and I don't think I don't think you are because you you still hear I, I still obviously know what's going on in the world because people yeah. tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But it, my my head's definitely a safer space. Um, it, it's not even that. Is it's all the subconscious things that you take away from watching to the news, isn't yeah. it? It's not that you go away thinking, oh, I want to either go and change it or I want to stop it. It's just somehow it just lies in there somewhere, and it it just adds to whatever then stress you do have in your life. And exactly. even that load out has just made a huge difference for me even though it i I can't claim it ever affected me Mm. but i definitely feel fresher by not looking at the news too much um you going to university then what's Mm. with your relationship with your mother she's back at home you're at university how Mm. how did your relationship change or or stay the same during that time yeah i mean look it was i mean our relationship's always been pretty rocky and fragile anyway me and my mum are both so i'm me and my mum are a lot more similar than my sister and my mum are and and me and my mum are both scorpio so we're very fiery characters so me and my mum would argue a lot and we would clash a lot whereas um it wasn't the same with with my sister um so me and my mum always had quite a fragile rocky relationship anyway but then when i went to university um you know you know there was times she would come up and visit me and it would be fine and things like that um but then I would go I would go months we would go months sometimes without without speaking um but what happened at university um I think probably from having that distance um a lot of a lot more stuff started to come out for me I would get really angry most of the time you know when I was on nights out with my friends and we'd been drinking a lot of anger would start to come out and to the point where like you know a few of my friends and a boyfriend at the time said you should probably you know go and speak to someone because I would get you know it's it's you know not nice for anyone on the receiving end of of that um so yeah I went I went to counseling for the first time when I was in Aberdeen and it was probably the first time I really properly opened up about everything because you know you you tell your close friend bits and pieces but you never well I never certainly you know went into anything in great detail but in counseling you feel like okay this is a stranger and you almost feel like you can. Um, so it was the first time I really opened up, um, you know, about everything that I'd been through. Um, and then my anger. And she got me to, you know, write a letter uh, to my mum. I never sent it to her. But it was really therapeutic because it just, like, got everything out. And slowly, slowly, the anger started to fade. It would always come come out, in, you know, sometimes. But it, it wasn't near as bad. And, and that really was from just writing that letter and kind of getting getting it all out because I think I was holding it all in and then it wasn't it then when I was drinking it was like coming out yeah yeah the power of writing Mm. the power of journaling it's an interesting topic and it's come up quite a lot and I've noticed a trend across a lot of the guests not all a lot of the guests Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's um people used to say that to me about writing my story down Mm. and I was like and and I'm open about it and I Mm. and I don't think like this now but I'm like no that's girly I'm not doing that no, 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 you know, putting the macho mm. stuff on. I'm yeah. not writing down, are you kidding me? I'll just say it. Because I've always been an open book, whereas a lot of guys do or did close off, but I've always been an open book about my right. stuff. Um, I've never really been worried about that. But I, it's probably on the flip side of people probably roll their eyes going, here we go again, <laughs> right? 
Um, but the the right, but again, I heard it on the podcast. I think it was Diary of the CEO. You know, people can vent, and it's very helpful to vent. Mm-hmm. When you vent, you release the undesired emotions. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the day starts again. You need to do it again because you're not hitting that crisis point of change because you've released those emotions. So you don't need to make a a major change because you get rid of what you need to get rid of. And um, the next layer to that would, I think, would be journaling. And I think that's where then I, why Mike and I wrote that was because we really wanted to get our story out, Mm. but not our story, everyone else's story that we're willing to share their workplace bullying challenges. Um, and that's when the lead, uh, the podcast led because I wanted to share other people's stories so people can take pieces away from them. Yeah. Right. And, and but yeah, uh, going back to journaling, it's just it's just so powerful. It made the world a difference to me. Mm-hmm. So in your counselling, that was one of your strategies to use, right? Yeah, yeah. And I've always I've uh, gone on and off journaling, but I've you know, pretty much journaled, um, you know, since I was a teenager um, mm-hmm. as well. And it is. You know, reading and writing are, I would say, the two things that really saved me in, in, in many respects. And it does really help. Anytime a friend's going through something or a friend opens up to me about something, I'm, I'm I always, probably sick of me saying, I always say, have you tried to write it down? But yeah. it does, it does really help because I think sometimes we just, our thoughts go round and round. And then if they're negative thoughts, they become bigger and bigger and bigger. And then if you just write it out, mm. it, it really does lessen it. So, um, yeah, it's, and, and a lot of people say, oh, journaling's for not for me. I'm like, oh, just try it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was actually going to bring that point up that you just said. And I think my advice to anyone who is on that fence line or not even willing to jump on one side, like how I never used to read. So mm. I, ha, I, what I took from Jim Quick was just read half a page, read a line. Mm. Mm. Same with journaling. Just write a line down. Mm-hmm. The next day, the next night before bed, write just one more line. Mm. Before you know it, you're writing two lines, and before you know it, you're re- writing half a page, and before you know it, you're writing a page. And yeah. I think anything that you're struggling to get over the fence on, if you just try a little bit, yeah, it just gets the ball rolling, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, thanks for sharing your little vulnerable journey there. That's not little. I don't mean that like that, but you know what I mean. That that vulnerable part. It's mm. it's powerful and mm. it it it's 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 logical and it's simple, but so hard to just do. And I think that's why more and more people need to hear it from the guests here on the show. And it is powerful. And it yeah. yeah. So after university, where did that you? You, your dad was in Bristol. You moved down to Bristol, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So after uh, after university, I did four years at uni, mm-hmm. and then I did a little stint in Rotterdam uh, for six months, um, and then yeah, um, I moved down to Bristol. Um, I I actually wanted to go to uni in Bristol. I always wanted to move to Bristol. At one point when I was twelve, I nearly did move to Bristol, and, and my dad was looking at schools, but then um. Uh, talk to mom. Didn't want to leave sister, so I didn't go in the end. But I'd always really wanted to go to Bristol because I would go down in Bristol and visit my dad, and I loved going. I loved Bristol. I loved hanging out with my dad. Um. So yeah. So I wanted to go to uni in Bristol, but you have to pay tuition fees in England. But in Scotland, you don't have to pay tuition fees. My dad was yeah. like, "You can move down after uni." <laughs> <laughs> Save me some coin. <laughs> yeah, so I moved down there after uni. So I was twenty-one at the time. Uh, so I moved in with my dad and my stepmom, um, um, until I got until I got a job, um, and then got my own place. And funnily enough, one of my friends from Aberdeen had decided, like we'd already we'd planned, he was going to move down to Bristol, um, and he came down a couple months later, and we lived together. And then one of my very close friends from school, her and her boyfriend um, of many years had, had split up. So she was like, I'm just going to move to Bristol too. And then a few months after that, another one of my friends from school, the same thing happened. A long-term relationship ended. And she was like, I'm just coming to Bristol too. So there was like four of us in a house here, all Brilliant. from Scotland, living in Bristol. And it was, yeah, it was All great. because you were there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've tried to get them to come to Australia, but they've, they've not done it. <laughs> it's too far, yeah. I know I've I'm not very, been successful in that point either. <laughs> uh, one of my guests, on a side note, is coming to stay with me at New Year, though. So oh, excited lovely. about that. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Can't wait for that. Um, so you got into recruitment and marketing. Is that the beginning of your marketing career? 
Yeah, so um, I um, my first graduate job. It's really hard to obviously get a job after uni, so I kind of went a year just doing odd jobs, um, and then yes, I got a job as a marketing coordinator at a recruitment company, and I was there for two and a half years. Uh, I really enjoyed it because it was you know at that time it was you know writing blogs, um, you know getting the website up and running, SEO, social media. So it was all still like writing. I was interviewing people. Um, and it was great fun as well. It was a really small recruitment company. Um, all of us were like in our 20s. Um, so we had a great time. It was a really good first job. And it's actually where I met my met my now husband. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. And so you, because um, you, you and I share something in common. Okay. We both, I don't know if you know this, but we both went traveling at 24. Ah, I think you did, mate. So told me that, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. we, why did you, were you at your job? What happened there in that part of your life then? You've got yeah. a job, but yeah. why all so of a sudden? Is, this is where my impulsiveness comes again. My impulsiveness, <laughs> I think, is quite good because it's taken me to uh, lots of different um, uh, places that most people would overthink and then maybe not do, but because I'm so impulsive, I just do it. Mm. Um, so I, I'd, I'd been promoted a couple of times in that job, uh, but they were really small companies, was like 25, 30 people. And I remember sitting down, I was really, I got on really well with the managing director. And um, I, I, I was like, look, you're doing a great job. I just, you know, there's, there's nothing else I can do. We've already promoted you at market manager. I mean, I wasn't managing anyone, but I was the market manager. <laughs> he was like, there's nowhere else to go. I can't, we don't want to like, you know, we love having you here, but like, I can't, I can't, you know, promote you anymore. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I'm not. In my head, I thought, well, I'm not going to stay if I can't, you know, because I'm quite an ambitious, driven person. I'm like, well, you know, if I'm capped already, I'm only, t- I think I was 23, 24 at the time. Mm. Um, so that happened at the same time of my my previous boyfriend. We were we were not getting on well, and then we decided to end that relationship. I thought, huh, okay, well, I c- my work's not going anywhere. I'm now single. I'd had had a bit of savings. So I said to my, my best mate at the time that I was living with, I said, I think I might go traveling. And she's like, okay. So I was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go to the, um, not flight center, but the equivalent, um, and just kind of see how much tickets will be. So I went there and we got a few different routes priced up. I really wanted to go through South America, but I just didn't have an, enough money. So I said, okay, how much would it be to go through Thailand? And they gave me, she gave me the ticket prices. And I still remember the time my friend was sitting there. She was just on her phone. Like we said, she was just on her yeah. phone. And uh, the woman said, uh, gave me the price. And I went, here's some bank card, book them. And my friend looked up and she went, I thought we were just getting prices. I was like, no, I can afford it. Let's just do it. So I just booked them then and there. So I booked wow. my, my one-way ticket. Um, yeah, then and there. I was only supposed to get prices. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I share a similar journey and I... Nobody, it, it, I used to tell people to go and travel and it's the same face. Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. You, you're not going to go traveling. And I think I said it for like two years, but I just knew I wanted to do it and I knew yeah. I was going to do it, but I could see it. I was like, yeah, yeah. And you, you said this last year, it's not happened, Andy. So I didn't say anything. I went and booked the ticket and I said, I'm leaving on the 24th of July. Mm. I'm out. Mm. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> There's the ticket. Um, yeah, that's funny. And I also booked a trip to, to Australia even years later, just as a holiday after we returned. And it was like, like we went to the traffic centre in Manchester and uh, just looked for flights and, nice. yep, booked it, came home, got yep. to Australia and the Easter holidays, mum. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, okay, so you booked it. But something happened between yeah. then and yeah. then, right? Yeah. This is pretty interesting. <laughs> Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.